My name is Jay Morell. Welcome back to my channel. I feel like I should have this candy box turned around right. So, it's a snow day here, and I have been plotting all week, all week. We're having redemptive canning today, okay? I've got a 30 quart stock pot full of cherries, because that makes sense. Now, for extra fun, I don't remember exactly how many pounds of cherries it was. The reason I'm calling it redemptive canning, that's just what comes on up at me, is that last summer, before I had a whole lot of real bad freight train life stuff, country song stuff happen, we processed these cherries, okay? We pitted them, we washed them, they were ready to go. I was going to can them. I feel like there's, yeah, I have other things in my freezer downstairs and it's January now and it just makes sense seven months later that now's the time to finally can those cherries. And I want to start back <laughs> to canning. It's been a while. I'm trying to think. And again, I'd have to go watch my own videos. Maybe it's been since May or June. I mean, I totally miss the summer canning and the fall harvest time canning. We, we totally missed all that. But I want to start working in these videos where we're going to be going through the freezers and getting the different things I shoved in there. And we're gonna start getting things done around here with those items. And it'll just be a good process on many levels. So today we're at least going to start the process with the cherries. Again, I feel rusty. It's been a while. I did go through the process. We brought the Amish canner, the Amish made canner. It's a big giant water bath canner. You may remember when I got it in 2023. I think it was the winter or the fall, but it, it made its way back upstairs. Now, you know, I have, what is it? A 41 quart all American pressure canner. We will be getting the pressure canners out. Probably not today, but today we are gonna do some sort of good cherry jam. I've got a big bag of Pomona's pectin. We're gonna go down the, and these weren't the tart cherries, they were the sweet cherries. We're gonna go down, do all the math. We're gonna just jump in and get started and see where this canning snow day adventure takes us. You can see our snow day a happening out there. Also, those who have followed along, we got the window sills installed, the walls are painted, now the lighting, you know, I'm not an expert, I only do YouTube, what do I know? But the color on the walls is called sea salt. If you're over in my Large Family Table community membership, I have a video of this whole process up over there, but the crown molding is done. Look at that, just nice and buttoned up and fresh around here. So it's a, a, good, a good base color, like it's not overpowering, but it is fresh. So here I am, friends. I'm trying to show you the snowflakes coming down, but it's just too dark with the trees and everything outside. But don't worry, I'm gonna give you a pretty decent view of it here in a moment. It's like, is the snow, is the snow getting shown in this footage? I'm trying to show you all the snow. But it's like, look, we're having real snow in Virginia, wow. See, we don't get this here every year, but we're getting some this year. Oh, and I have something else exciting to show you. Remember this used to be the green door and I had them paint it a mustard to match the front doors because I love this color. And this is called Show Me the Mustard by Sherwin-Williams. Another friend of mine has her front door painted this color and that's, that's how I picked this color. So anyway, just buttoned up and got fresh all that we could button up and get fresh around here. So for extra fun, I don't really know how many pounds of cherries we're working with. You know, it'll be a surprise for all of us. Yeah, but it's all gonna work. It's gonna work out great. Uh, here's our Pomona's pectin that I had bought in one of my Azure Standard orders, and we are just gonna follow. They have these nice little jam, jelly, marmalade, low sugar or honey recipes. And so we are gonna follow the sweet cherry jam and we are going to mega massive the math as we go. We will be surprised, oops, we will be surprised, as I said, by how much jam we're getting out of this and how many cherries we're actually processing. 
I know it's in a video from early last summer, I believe. I just don't remember. And I'm going to make this video instead of watching my old videos right now. So we're gonna get this sink washed out and we're gonna wash these jars because my dishwashers are full and my other sink is full. So we will just do it this old fashioned way. Yes, I could do my other dishes, but then I couldn't do this canning. And I do have other folks here who will get on top of the dishes here shortly. They are enjoying their snow day fun also. And that's why we have two sinks and two dishwashers. So now I'm just spraying out the bottom of my sink there, giving it some warm soapy water to rinse it out, and then we are going to start hand washing these jars. So since it's a mystery to all of us and we're gonna find out, I'm probably gonna do two boxes of jars right now. best way I know how to get back at something is just jump right back in. Like you never stop. So that's what we're doing. Uh, honestly, I may not need my big Amish water bath canner for this. I may need, just want to have some little water bath, smaller, regular old size. But we'll see. If I get too stuck in it, then I just won't start it at all. So we're, we're gonna get started. So while my water's going, little directions here. For sweet cherry, it says pit, chop, mash, or peel. Pit and mashed fruit. Measure four cups mashed fruit. It says optional to soften firm fruit, bring to boil with a half cup of water, simmer five minutes. And it says that these recipes can be doubled, tripled, half, or quartered. So we're just let's get started by getting these, dumping out these cherries, see what we what we have to work with, heating them up a little bit while I wash the jars and dry them. I'm gonna be talking through this a lot because I'm rusty, but we're figuring this out together. Yay. I guess to get an idea of how many cups of cherries it is we're really dealing with, I could take these bags out. You gotta listen to me talk and plan out. Take the bags out and we will measure them in. Let's do that. That sounds good. So it's not an exact science, but I thought it would get us, give us a pretty good idea, get us pretty close. I just start dumping out every gallon bag of cherries, and I have several gallon bags. Again, these have been in my freezer since early last summer. And I thought then I could use my four cup glass, like Pyrex measuring cup, and just scoop the cherries into the pot and get a rough idea on how many cups we have. Now, of course, as I mash the cherries and as more of the juices come out, we actually end up with a little bit more than I figured towards the end. But again, this is approximate. We were pretty close. And just wait until you see, again, all of this redemptive canning, how many jars of this wonderful homemade cherry jam we get. Again, I'm, I'm proud of us. This was a big day, a huge accomplishment. The cherries still look beautiful and we're doing things. So here I am, I'm just, again, getting my little measuring cup full and flatten them down just a bit with my wooden measuring, not measuring spoon, my wooden spoon. And we are doing this not exact perfect science math, but pretty good. Now we do break the math down though properly per batch. But again, I was tr just trying to gauge I get pretty good with my canning math once we get a couple canning sessions in. So it looks like we have about 36 cups of pitted sweet cherries from early last summer, I believe. 
So I'm going to get these on the stove now. I think I'm also going to put a few more jars in my hot soapy water, just in case, because I don't know where this is going. We'll find out in the end. So mystery canning math is always, you know, that's always a fun adventure. And so now I'm going to do my next steps and keep on moving forward. And as I say, see where this takes us. Now at this point, I thought that I was going to do the whole pot of the 36-ish cups of cherries and I do get the heat on and we do start that process while I go ahead and get some other jars washing. You will see coming up though, I decide to break it down into smaller batches. I mean, look at me. Am I a whole sensible person now? I don't know. This could be the new me, but we still accomplish the same massive mega amount of canning. But again, like I say, we break it down into several batches and things work out pretty well. As I like to say, I'm proud of us. And also running the jars through the dishwasher. Hey, that makes sense, but my dishwashers are full and my snow day kids are busy and I am busy focusing on actually getting this canning going. So I did not want to stop to unload the dishwashers or I might not actually get this canning done. I am going to get our Amish made canner also ready to go. I'm going to get that full of water and get that heating up. At this point, I still wasn't sure if we were going to even fill that canner halfway, but stick with me and see what happens. In 2024, I've been thinking about the products I'm using on my skin. I thought about switching to a natural deodorant and Wild reached out to me. I wanted to make sure natural deodorant was right for me. I tried Wild for 30 days and I've loved the scents and the packaging. The canisters are reusable and you can refill the deodorant with different scents. The ingredients are all super clean and there are no toxins. They also last longer than normal deodorants, so you end up saving more. They also have a subscription service, which is great as they get sent to my door and I don't have to think about buying deodorant. If you are thinking about trying a natural deodorant, give Wild a try. Click my link below in the description or pinned comment to get 20% off all products using my code JMRL20. Thanks so much for Wild for partnering with me. So my brain's firing. It's getting into my, my canning math that I need to do. And we have, as I said, the 36 cups of the sweet cherries in here. The recipe from Pomona's pectin says, again, it can be doubled, tripled, half a quarter. So we're gonna triple it. And that means we'll be working with 12 cups of the fruit at one time. So I'm gonna get a cute little precious baby pot going that will deal with the 12 cups. And we'll go through the process of making 12 cups of the cherries at a time. So we'll do it three times in this pot to get through making our homemade sweet cherry jam. Look at us, we're doing it. And I have, so the, again, I'm feeling the Amish water bath canner is potentially too much for this project, but that's okay. We can still water bath can in it. It's just not necessarily gonna be a full canner load, but we're doing it. Okay, so I do have that with water and I have that heating up as well. And I know that by the time we finish with this sweet cherry jam today, it's just going to help me getting fired up again as I keep talking about to do all the canning and all the things, yay. And so now it's back to washing jars. I'm rinsing them off now and we are gonna do the next steps from here. all of our jars all nice and washed up and ready to go so in our canning math it looks like we are going to have so we're tripling it so it's four cups so it'll be 12 cups of mass mashed or simmered fruit then we are going to use we're taking one fourth cup of lemon juice and doing three fourths cup of lemon juice and then it has a sliding scale because using Pomona's pectin allows you to make low sugar or honey canning recipes. And in canning in general, I do remember this, there's a whole lot of sugar that goes into a lot of these recipes. So this gives you some wiggle room to work with it. So you can use anywhere from half a cup to a cup of honey 
for your four cup base recipe to three quarter cup to two cups of sugar. And so, since we're tripling it, I am going on the higher end of this and I am going to use six cups of organic cane sugar from Azure. Uh, then let's see here, then it's three teaspoons pectin, four teaspoons calcium water, so we will be doing three tablespoons of pectin and four tablespoons of calcium water. I am proud of us. Again, all canning cylinders are beginning to fire on this snow day, and I'm excited. All right, so taking our little precious we That is a snow day fun going on in the background. They have, they're making a whole forest in the living room. There are trees made out of construction paper. There are helicopters. This is the indoor play after all the fun outdoor play in the snow. Let's see if I can move that back. Will that work? Maybe just barely. I think we can do it. Alrighty, don't be scared. Same canning day, same canning channel. Had a wardrobe malfunction. Now I'm in my plaid shirt or whatever this is. Okay, yay. So the world's uh, most ginormous masher. One of my viewers sent this to me in 2023 at some point, okay? We're gonna try to mash a little fruit with it and uh, get a little arm workout. That's good. So yeah, I had put a scoop or two in the smaller pot and I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's do a little mashing ahead of time. So we're doing the, the massive uh, mashing in the big pot, and then we are gonna measure out our 12 cups of our mashed fruit into the pot to do, so we end up doing three triple batches of the cherry jam. And now that I'm saying that, I think there's also an extra half batch we get at the end, but we'll watch together. We'll watch together and be surprised, okay? All right, so to add the three-fourths cup of lemon juice next. All right, so now we are going to add four tablespoons of the calcium water. Next, we're gonna get a separate bowl and add our sugar and pectin to that bowl. And now I'm working on scooping out the kneaded cups of organic cane sugar from one of my sugar buckets that I have that we work through. And believe me, when you get to canning, depending on what you're doing, there's a whole lot of sugar. Now I could have used honey um, or I could have, I could have even used, I could have used less sugar honestly, but everybody was very happy with my homemade cherry jam. So we did just fine. And I thought this was the easiest way for my brain to do this on my very first back to canning day in probably eight months or so. So right now I have the pectin and the sugar and I am just stirring that around and then we are going to pour that in with our cherries that are cooking up as well. And we're gonna give it a big stir, mix it in really nice there so it dissolves. And I need to stir it for one to two minutes and I just use my watch timer for so much, helps me, helps me keep my life straight. So let me know what you all think about the sea salt wall color how that turned out and the crown molding. They were here two or three days finishing up those projects. And so it's just good. It's good to get those things done. And then plus the window sills. I think it was buttoned up, finished up pretty nice. They also, I haven't shared a picture of this yet, but they got the shutters on the front of the house. And that's another project that we started a while ago that just finally came together having the folks here to do it and so now I am measuring out my cherry jam into each jar and in my classic 
jam around style. Sometimes I get a little too full, sometimes not enough, and so we scoop in and out. I check the head space there. And I did not have a chopstick to push down to debubble it, but I am using a plastic utensil there. And I think that worked pretty well. But I know in the past I've used chopsticks and that has also worked well. So just putting a little bit more for that one. And then I wipe my rim with vinegar. Remember this from the olden days. And then I do have the jars and lids in very hot water now in my sink. I had boiled some water and also did some warm water to my clean jars and I'm just fishing them out of the sink now as needed. And on this snow day we had sledding, we had forts, we had a little miniature snowmen, we had all kinds of fun. And I'm just continuing now with my jam assembly line. And that's a new funnel. I had I got that last summer and I hadn't actually used that yet. You know, I have a green one I like to use too. But that was an extra wide mouth funnel. I thought I can use that today. So I still have not found my mixer that we're looking for. But I did get back in my canning cabinets and took a survey with my eyeballs on what I have in there and what I have to work with. And so we'll be getting getting through and getting to a lot of those things. It's just some extra boxes of jars and of course a whole lot of rings and different canners and such are all there. But my faithful jar what, what do you call it? The jar holder, the jar, those tongs that you move jars with. Um, I found that and I found my little headspace checker there. And now I'm just going through the steps to fill jars again, getting things done. Such a big accomplishment. Now I have several, several bags of frozen green grapes in my downstairs freezer. And then I also have two huge baskets of tomatoes. Now I know my local John Henry General store, they have had 25 pound cases of green tomatoes here recently. I had just messaged them about that. I hadn't been in, but I was thinking of getting some, even if they're green tomatoes, I've had those in my basement before and I just let them set out. And then as they turn red, I put them in the freezer. So I'm thinking, um, I'm just I'm thinking tomato thoughts. <laughs> I think it was last year, was it February or March, where we canned um, hundreds of pounds of tomatoes. Okay, we can go to the video footage. And I have not canned tomatoes since then. And I would love to do some more tomato canning. So maybe, maybe that'll be our annual super mega massive tomato canning experience here in winter. But I do, I have thoughts about canning that and I do have some other frozen berries like some blueberries and some blackberries that we might end up doing some more jams with and that is what is in the freezer as far as things that I froze earlier in the summer and had not been able to get to so it's such a feels like a big accomplishment to get back to this point where I can get my canners going again and Yes, just work through these things. And so now here I am getting another batch going. I'm got to beat down my sugar there because I had some clumps and I have another 12 cup batch of the mashed cherries ready to go. Giving you a smile and stir, stir, stirring. And this will be funny, friends, just in all behind the scenes reality of recording voiceover. I am outside in my car recording this voiceover <laughs> for this big canning day video. And it's now raining hard. So if you feel like at any point where you're, you're hearing a relaxing rainstorm off in the distance, I don't know. Maybe you don't hear it. Here, let me be quiet for a minute. Tell me if you hear it. Okay. This is, this is mom YouTube life. Okay, this is where I could record. This is how this is how things work around here. 
So sometimes I'm able to record in my kitchen and then you'll get the ice maker and the loud refrigerator in the background and sometimes I have to record in my vehicle depending on family activities and what is happening and sometimes you get a rainstorm. But I'm continuing with these batches and the jam is looking great. I can report from the future that we've already used two jars of this jam. It's been very popular and it's just fun to see the family being proud that mama made this jam and being excited about it. And so I love that. I love that and I love being able to take this snow day afternoon. I mean, what a dream, take a snow day afternoon and make so many pints and half pints. You'll see, you'll see the totals at the end here of this jam. And I've got a good little assembly line, good routine. I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, this is how this works. This is how I did this. I know if I can can maybe two or three more times, I'll just really feel back in the swing of things with it. And that's good. And I've been continuing to use the different items I've canned. Just the other day, I used two jars of the chicken that we canned. And I keep saying I'm out of broth. And then I go down and I'm like, oh, look, six more quarts of beef broth. Or the other day, I was like, oh, here's four more quarts of chicken broth. So I really want to go downstairs and organize my canning pantry and my pantry room. It's just low on my priority list right now. I'm kind of thinking by March or April, I should be able to get to basement projects. But we've been continuing to work through big home renovation, renovation projects. The new living room has been done and just I think it was two days before Christmas. I had two new dream couches delivered for us. So we had those here for Christmas Day. That just worked out so wonderful. Over in my Large Family Table community membership, I have videos of moving into the new living room and the new couches and that whole process. Also a video on the renovation of the kitchen and all these updates that have been done to it. Just, you know, even areas that needed caulk <laughs> and I had like the toe kick painted all the way around under the cabinets all of those good freshening up things very nice to be able to have that done and you can see we're getting to the end of our big pot we almost have the bottom of the Amish made canner full there's more sugar being stirred up for another batch Okay, I know this looks like bloody murder canning, but hello, sweet cherry jam. Anyway, so I'm going to these half pint jars now, but we got the whole bottom of the Amish made canner here full of the pints. And then there is a little shelf at the bottom that protects the jars from the heat. And then I have this additional shelf where you can do another layer of cans on top, jars. And that's what we're doing, but I am going to have to set my camera down probably and push that down with a spoon. But it allows me to do another layer of the half pint or pint jars on top. There we go. I got that pushed down now and we can continue to line the top with our jars as we get them full. And in the background, I do have a happy helper. We have the dishes unloaded after the snow day fun and I have some family folks loading the dishwashers while I'm over in my corner of the kitchen here getting the jars in the canner. And that's one of the things I like about canning. You know, I love a good workflow and so I really like how when you're canning one particular thing you just assembly line it and get it done. Keep doing it over and over and over but then at the end of the canning time you've completed a big batch of something fantastic and delicious that your family will love and you've been able to preserve food in some way 
and I just don't know how to do jam without having a towel covered in a jam sample. Jar lifter. That's what it's called. It's like it's a game show. What is that utensil called? The jar lifter. Thank you. And sometimes it really is just a small little speck that's needed to get the headspace right. And again, on this day, I am using the triple batch directions from my Pomona's Pectin Guide. Besides canning using the Pomona's Pectin recipes, I also use the recipes over on the National Center for Food Preservation. Okay, so with the juices from the cherries and such, we do have a little bit more left. And so I think it'll be maybe a batch and a half worth, maybe about one and a half times Pomona's pectin recipe we're working with. I'm still measuring it out. I just put four cups in. Probably gonna splatter, but happy canning. All right, looks like it'll be about six cups. So there you go, that's what I did. It was an extra one and a half times batch. So they have directions to do a half batch, a single batch, double batch, triple batch. And so basically I cut our triple batch in half using their directions to use up the last of the cherries that we had that were ready to go. Now, once in a while, I do find an authentic cherry pit. I think I found about nine. So hopefully there's not too many in the actual jam, but that's what I, in this last batch that was at the bottom of the big pot, I did find a few, but we got them out. So maybe it doesn't count if we find them, right? I'm also continuing to run my 5K Winter Series races. So the race on this particular week where I'm doing this big canning, there was actually a race scheduled for the following day and it got canceled. So I had two races. Well, I guess it was the same race. It was canceled for weather maybe two weeks before and then it was canceled again. Well, it was rescheduled and then the second time that we had bad weather they were like yeah this one's just going to be canceled so i have run three 5k races so far with one rescheduled and then canceled just because that's when virginia was deciding to have wet winter and then the next week we had you know 67 70 degrees so when i'm recording this voiceover on this day i ran my third 5k race they had over 500 people run this morning and I had a pace of 12.37 and I came in at, it was like 38 minutes, 47 seconds. So again, I am a new runner, but I have been running and I plan to run like the wind through 2022. I run several 5Ks a week and if I can't run a 5K, I run a 3K. And then I am, as I learn more about running, I am, this all relates to canning, okay? <laughs> I know you like little life updates too, but as I'm learning more, about running i'm trying to take two to three like quote rest days a week and on those rest days i've been doing heavy walking i do want to get into doing some strength training though and i'm making an appointment at my local gym so they can help me just go through and develop the kind of strength training exercises my particular body needs and so i will in the future besides walking i'll be doing strength training on my non-running days but i have been running four to five times a week except when we had the one week with crazy crazy like ice and snow and ice and snow day after day after day it seemed like i didn't run at all that whole week but i did get back at it as soon as i could i do have a nice gym with an indoor track but again at that weather i wasn't even driving to the gym so, mama's doing things. Okay, well it turns out we did need the big Amish made canner because it's almost all the way full. I honestly wasn't counting how many pints and half pints we got in there. I'll crack the lid and show you here real quick, but almost, almost the full thing. So, I'm, I'm proud, who knew? Okay, so go and then the whole bottom layer is full. And I gotta 
get it boiling. And now from the future, I had to boil it for the certain amount of minutes for my altitude. I believe it was 10 minutes. It will depend for you on your altitude and so you have to read the directions specifically for your area. But I am getting my wood cutting boards ready because as the boiling is done and as the canner rests then a little bit, then I will open. I have already opened it at this point, as I say, from the future. And now it is time for me to get the jars out and they will set out. Really, it's a good 24 hours before I can get back to these as far as labeling them. I did remember to put a little splash of vinegar in my canner. I'm very proud of myself when I'm able to when I remember to do that. Otherwise you get the white sediment all over the jars and then they have to be wiped off. So, okay, so that's the first layer out and then I just use the end of a wooden spoon to pop up the plate that's in the middle. It actually comes up pretty easily there and then I can get the bottom layer. And again, this is a water bath canner, not a pressure canner, but it is nice to do big batch water bath canning. Look at these beauties. Wow. This is nice to see out on the counter again. So it's 18 pints of sweet cherry jam and 19 half pints. There you go. That's how that worked out. Well, happy snow day Saturday. Our jars of jam, of homemade jam that we did, yay, we were victorious, have been sitting out over 24 hours now, and I'm going to label these lids, remove the bands, put them in some canning boxes, and get them down to my little canning pantry. top of each jar I'm going to label and date just with a permanent magic marker there and then I take the I unscrew the lid off the reason I do that is it can create a false seal if the rings are left on I don't know I think I said take the lid off but I meant take the rings off I'm learning my terms again but I do remember to take the rings off so there's not a false seal and I do go through and test the lid on each jar. I should be able to pick it up with my fingertips there. And there should be a nice seal. Again, these have sat over 24 hours. And so I did get to hear all the lids popping the day before as things continue to seal all the way. And so now it is just this assembly line process. So thank you friends. You were with me last summer when we washed these cherries and pitted them. I actually think I had a teenager working on that project when I was working on a big sourdough whatever I was doing. Sourdough summer video. But I know it was going on in the background in one of my videos earlier last summer and I'm just so glad things have come back around to where I am now in the space, in the headspace where I'm like I can do canning. I enjoyed that. That's something I've been working on is getting back to doing things that bring me joy. And canning is one of those things. And I love that I can do it in the quote canning off season. I can do it year round and I want to get this muscle going again. So I'm hoping real soon for some more canning videos. I was reading the other day about canning grape juice. Oh, is that what we do with those grapes? I'm not sure. You can give me your ideas. Okay, give me in the comments below. Let me know what you would like to see me do some canning with and 
what we should tackle, I'm excited. I'm excited for 2024, and thank you for watching my video today, and I'll see you real soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.